Cool, this is the next video in a playlist that I'm calling General Linear Models Design of Experiments. And within that playlist, I'm creating little mini series that correspond to the different types of designs of experiments. And this little mini series deals with repeated measures, one way fixed effects ANOVA. And this is part three. And we're looking at the column space of the design matrix. And I'd refer you to parts one and two for background on what we're doing here. So the model can be thought of as y equals x beta star plus epsilon. And this the design matrix X can be partitioned into a column of ones that's associated with mu, uh, A columns associated with the A treatment effects, that, and that's the tiles, and then the betas are associated with those subjects that we're using in our design. Now, beta is normally distributed, epsilon is normally distributed, Beta and Epsilon are independent, and all the following theorems pertain to this model. So theorem 1, let's let, let J be the perpendicular projection matrix on the column space of 1's, and to see part 2 for more details. M tau be the perpendicular projection matrix on the column space of X tau, and beta or M beta be the perpendicular projection matrix on the column space of X beta. And in parts 1 and 2, we describe the format of what these look like. In part two, we look at the perpendicular projection matrices onto those. Now again, X is one, X tau, beta, X beta. Then the theorem is then M tau, and that should be a tau, is the perpendicular projection, so this is a tau, not a J, dang it, minus two on my homework is the perpendicular projection matrix onto the orthogonal complement of the space of one with respect to x tau. And what that means, if we take some vector in, in, uh, in a space, so it's dangling out there somewhere, and we pre-multiply it by m tau minus jeta, it's going to shove it down into the column space of x tau, but it's going to be perpendicular to the, the one vector. And that's what it means. And M beta minus J is a perpendicular projection matrix onto the orthogonal complement space of 1 with respect to X beta. And again, you take any vector, pre-multiply it times this perpendicular projection matrix, and it, and it shoves it into this column space, but orthogonal to the 1 vector. And so what that means is it adds to 0. Okay, so note that the column space of 1 is actually a subset of the column space of X tau. And the similarly, x column space of 1 is a subset of x, you know, the column space of x beta, right? Because if you add all these columns, you get 1. And if you add all these columns, you get 1. So they're subspaces of each other. And so by property 7 in video perpendicular projection matrices, then the, the result follows that these are perpendicular projection matrices as described here. Now, theorem 2 if we take j plus m tau minus j plus m beta minus j, that's the perpendicular projection matrix onto this column space. Now, we write it like this because it makes the theory easier to see and when we go to the proof. But really, you know, this j would cancel with that. And so this overall matrix is m tau plus m beta minus j but it's, it's easier to see it like this. And the proof is this. So in part two, we show that J, M tau minus J, and M beta minus J are perpendicular projection matrices onto their own column spaces. Also from part two, we showed that these column spaces are, all, are orthogonal. They're pairwise orthogonal. And then by theorem one, in a video that I called sum of perpendicular projection matrices, then it follows that this is the perpendicular projection matrix onto this column space. And we're, and we're done. Now, theorem three is the rank of J, the rank of M tau minus J, and the rank of M beta minus J, all are these. One, A minus one, and M minus one. And here's a proof. Since J is, is idempotent, by theorem 7, in a video that I called idempotent matrices, the rank is equal to the trace. 
Now J has this form. So the trace of this is add the diagonal elements. So if we add the diagonal elements of this, we get NA, but then we're dividing by NA, so it's 1. Now, since m tau minus j is idempotent, the rank is equal to the trace, and so the trace is, the, is into each of those, and this is block diagonal, and in each block, we're adding n, but dividing by n, so it's 1, but we're doing that for each block, all a blocks, and this is 1, so we get a minus 1. Now, the rank of m beta minus j is equal to the trace because it's idempotent, so the trace of m beta, which is this, minus the trace of j. And, and the add up a1s, we get a, divide by a, you get 1. But we're doing this for the n, n blocks down that diagonal, so we get n minus 1. And the theorem is proved. Now, this theorem, we're going to show that the column space of this... Remember, this deals with theorem 3 earlier. So the column space of the augmented matrix, J, m tau minus J, and m beta minus J, is equal to the column space of J, or the, the augmented matrix, J, m tau, and m beta. Now to show this, what you do is you assume a vector is in this column space, and we show that it lives in this column space. And then we show that if a vector lives in here, it also lives in here. So those two column spaces would be equal. So let's go this way. Let's assume there's a vector in, in here, this column space. So that means that um, W can be represented like this, where W is some, uh, the, these are all vectors in Rn space, right? So you take this augmented matrix times some vector so when it's the linear combination of those that creates this W. And that's, this is what this represents. But we can combine. So the J's, we can combine to this. The M tau is just the M beta is just this. But isn't this a linear combination of the augmented matrix J, M tau, and beta, which is what this is? So that says that W lives in this column space. Now let's assume there's a vector that in this column space. So that means V can be represented as a linear combination of those columns for some V1, V2, and V3 where they it lives in our uh, NA space. So now let's add a well-chosen zero. Right? So look at this. So we have j v2 and then minus j v2 so that's adding zero we have j v3 and minus j v3 so we've added zero so we've actually added nothing to this equation but when we write it like this it v becomes a linear combination of these columns so v has to live in this column space and then the result follows now Theorem 5 is that the column space of the perpendicular projection matrix m tau is equal just to the, co the column space of x tau. In the same way here, the column space of m beta is equal to the column space of x beta. The column space of j is equal to the column space of 1. And now, in the interest of time, I'm going to push you off to another video I created. So this immediately follows using property 2 in a video that I called perpendicular projection matrices. So then that follows. So now theorem 6 is that we know M created like this, X, X transpose X, generalized inverse X transpose is the perpendicular projection matrix onto the column space of X. Now we're going to show that M has this form, M tau plus M beta minus J. So let's prove it. So by property four, in a video that I titled Perpendicular Projection Matrices, we know M is the unique perpendicular projection matrix on the column space of X. And I underline the because it's the only one. Perpendicular projection matrices are unique. Now, by theorem two, 
we know that m tau plus m beta minus j is the perpendicular projection matrix onto this column space. And by theorem 4, we know th th uh, this column space is equal j to j m tau, the augmented matrix j m tau m beta. And then by theorem 5, we showed that the column space of j is equal to the column space of 1. Column space m tau is x equal to x tau. Column space of x beta is equal to x beta. But this is the column space of x. So this implies that this perpendicular projection matrix onto this column space, which is the same of x, so it has to also be the perpendicular projection matrix on the column space of x. But perpendicular projection matrices are unique. So m has to be this, m tau plus m beta plus minus j. And that's pretty exciting, and, and that'll be so useful in upcoming videos. Now, theorem 7, the rank of M, and since M is a permanent projection matrix, it's the trace. So the rank of M is, is equal to this. This is M, right? So then it's equal to the trace, but we showed this is A, this is N, and this is minus 1. So that's the, the rank. And that'll come into part in our distributional properties. Um, to prove this, it's really used the same arguments as theorem 3 in this video. In the interest of time, I'll let you do that on your own. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.